Washed up comedian Rob Schneider memed a little bit too close to the sun at a Republican event and ended up getting burned. And by burned, I mean canceled. And by canceled, I mean he's saying that this is another attempt to cancel him. Now, this comes after he has increasingly aligned himself with conservatives over the years after he got red pilled himself. And the Rolling Stone has a pretty comprehensive timeline about his red pilling. It started back in 2012 and 2013 when he came out as an anti-vaxxer, then endorsed a Republican and accused Obama of being a secret Muslim, only to then do the enlightened centrist pivot in 2020 before going full Republican in 2022 and subsequently getting his own comedy special on Fox News, where he told the same pronoun joke literally every single right-wing comedian ever has told. His pronouns are he and ha. Get it? Because pronouns are silly and trans people are goofy. Yeah. Now, during his enlightened centrist phase, he basically copied Dave Rubin to a T. Like, I'm not making this up. He literally referred to himself as a classical liberal and he claimed that he was liberal on social issues. But, you know, people are getting a little bit too carried away with this cancel culture nonsense. And he didn't say the left when he was talking about cancel culture. But, I mean, he did loudly defend comedians who were being canceled in large part by the left, like Louis C.K., Kevin Hart, and even Ellen DeGeneres, and tweeted, Jokes are words, you fucking moron cunts. But in all of his edginess, he, he censored himself. <laughs> like he chose to censor the words fuck and cunt, which is so ironic to me because, you know, if you, if you are trying to be this edgy comedian uh, and you're trying to offend somebody, nothing undermines that than like censoring yourself in your tweet. Like you can post porn on Twitter literally, so you don't have to censor yourself. He chose to do that. So, I mean, good job, Rob. Now, I have to also show you the quote from IndieWire because he deleted that tweet. So I guess he's not willing to stick to his guns even though he said this a year later on Glenn Beck's program. Are you willing to lose it all for what you believe? Absolutely. So brave. Hey Rob, why'd you delete those tweets? Seems like, you know, you don't have that much confidence to be bold and edgy unless it comes to you punching down on marginalized people and telling the same pronoun joke that every other right-wing comedian ever has told. But I mean, that's as far as he's willing to go when it comes to pushing boundaries, right? To him, lazy and racist jokes based on stereotypes and derivative bullshit is his bread and butter. And conservatives, you know, they're oftentimes more than happy to laugh at those things so long as you're reinforcing their worldview. And that's kind of why he cozied up to them in the first place. It's why a lot of comedians cozy up to the right, because they'll clap like seals as long as you tell them what they want to hear, regardless if you're funny or not. However, he did get a brutal wake up call while he was in a conservative safe space. Daniel Lippman of Politico reports, former Saturday Night Live cast member Rob Schneider delivered a comedy set so off color and off putting to a group of prominent Republicans late last year that the host cut the performance short and later apologized to its attendees, Daniel Lippman reports. Senator Cindy Hyde-Smith walked out during Schneider's performance, which occurred at the holiday gala hosted at the Waldorf Astoria by the Senate Working Group, a networking group for senior GOP Hill staffers, downtown alumni, and other corporate and individual members. The show was supposed to last at least a half hour, but SWG Executive Director James Kimmy stopped it within 10 minutes after the comedian made raunchy and inappropriate jokes people present for or familiar with the performance said including some aimed at Asian people, including a crack about Korean whorehouses. So original. Schneider's set was gross and vulgar, Hyde Smith's spokesperson said. She didn't have to listen to it, and so she got up and left. The approximately 150 attendees, which included more than 40 Senate chiefs of staff, received an apology email the next day. Quote, while we do our best to ensure every aspect of our program is professional, courteous, and appropriate, we sincerely regret that the entertainment at last night's program fell short of that goal, it said. Ouch. So he probably thought, look, Republicans love racism. They're super racist, too. So I can say whatever I want. I could let it all hang out. But maybe he just went a little bit too far. But I do wonder if he's going to accuse Republicans of cancel culture and maybe call them a bunch of snowflakes.
My guess is that he'll passive aggressively accuse people of trying to cancel him while being as vague as possible so as to not offend the conservatives that he's aligned himself with. Oh, wait, that's not a guess. That's actually what he did. So in response, he promoted his special titled Woke Up America. Hmm, I wonder what that's about. And he followed up by saying, my Korean whorehouse joke is now streaming on Netflix and has been for the last three and a half years. The delayed, rescheduled, late onset third stage cancel attempt can be seen at your own leisure. Why'd they pick tax day? And speaking of snowflakes, he turned off the comments for this tweet, which is such a bitch move. Oh, and he also promoted his uh, free speech book too, adding, quote, since I'm trending, as my new book goes to print, Brazil has become a dictatorship. Scotland has enacted hate speech laws to attack comedians, while Ireland is debating passing their own versions. Are you paying attention yet? In other words, millionaire comedians are the real victims here. Now, first of all, no, Brazil is not a dictatorship. Second of all, he doesn't understand the Scotland law that he's talking about, as it literally cannot be used to censor offensive jokes from comedians. It is aimed at stochastic terrorists who use their platforms to incite hatred against marginalized groups. And transphobes like J.K. Rowling have cried freedom of speech to denounce the law and dared the government to arrest her for hate speech. But as a supposed lover of free speech, she's the one that weaponized the United Kingdom's defamation laws to bully her critics into silence. For example, journalist Rivka Brown of Navarra Media was forced to tweet this at risk of being sued. On March 13th, I tweeted that J.K. Rowling is a Holocaust denier. That allegation was false and offensive. I have deleted it and apologized to J.K. Rowling. But here's the thing. She did engage in Holocaust denialism. This tweet, where she denies that Nazis burn books about trans research, is still up till this day. But her attempt to silence her critic ended up backfiring after J.K. Rowling as a Holocaust denier started trending on Twitter. So she's learning about the Streisand effect the hard way. Now, the point is multimillionaires like J.K. Rowling and Rob Schneider, they don't have to worry about their free speech rights, right? They might want to pretend that they're the victims, but they're both incredibly rich. And this is somebody who has stand-up specials on Netflix. He even has his own show on Netflix. I believe it's a sitcom. So they're not the ones who should be worried as much as they want to portray themselves as victims. It's the people with no money and no power like Rivka Brown that could lose it all for saying the wrong thing or critiquing the wrong person. But of course, you know, he's going to cry free speech in response to this story because that's just what you do after getting canceled. That's part of the right-wing comedian playbook. The only problem is that the call is coming from inside the house, right? But I mean, being racist and reinforcing harmful stereotypes or punching down doesn't make you edgy or funny, Rob. It makes you a lazy hack. So either write better jokes, get better material, or shut the fuck up because nobody wants to hear you complain about how you're the one being victimized because people aren't laughing at your jokes. You're the one who's being the snowflake, Rob. So go beg Adam Sandler for like another five second cameo or something. You're going to be fine. You're not getting canceled, you insufferable prick. People just don't think that your jokes are funny anymore because they're not. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke ideology. Woke test. Woke ideology. Woke Olympics. Woke ideology. 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 Woke ideology.